So as we just saw, the um, order in which you pass parameters can be <coughs> can be important. So our generic sequence function is fine, but probably most of the time you want to use it just to go and calculate um, a two-foot term sequence or a proper Fibonacci sequence. So it then gets a little bit annoying if every single time you're using it, you have to remember to go and supply values for all the other parameters. It would be better if we could supply a default value. And Python provides this mechanism for us. Um, so it allows us to define some parameters to take a default value and some to be ones that you have to provide values for every time you call it. So these optional parameters, they are known as keyword parameters. And they're distinguished from the regular positional parameters by being assigned a default value in the def statement, in the def line. So here's how it would look if we make that second parameter, the end terms, a keyword parameter. The other thing I should say is that um, keyword parameters are always appear in the def line after the positional parameters. So ones where you're supplying a default value should come after the ones where they are not supplying a default value in the def line. So um, otherwise that's the same function. We've just now given it a default value for, of two for the number of terms. So if we don't supply an argument for n terms, then it will just take the value two. And if we do supply a value, then that will be override the value of two. So here you can see this, if we just call that function with max terms of 100, what it calculates is the standard two term Fibonacci sequence. But if we provide a value of three as a second parameter, um, then it will calculate the three term uh, version of a Fibonacci sequence. So now we're going to extend our function to be a, even a bit more powerful. So now we will change it so it will calculate the sum of the last n terms raised to some power. So in other words, we could have, say, um, the first few terms of a sequence um, uh, with n terms is 2 and power of 2 would be 1, 2, um, 5, which then becomes um, 1 squared plus 2 squared um, and 29, which is 2 squared plus 5 squared, and so on. So we could code our function to do that, something like this. So we've now introduced a, a second keyword parameter, or a third parameter of our problem, which we've called power. So it's otherwise the same function. We start off with a sequence of um, 1 times the n terms. We can do that because 1 raised to any power is going to be 1, so that part of the code doesn't need to change. And therefore, um, the, the starting off the term there is going to be um, the same um, because the sum of the squares is still just going to be 1 times the number of terms. And we have a similar sort of while loop. We append the term. The only complication now is to do the sum of adding the last few terms squared. We have to do that in a, a separate for loop. So um, we have a for loop which uh, is going to iterate over the last few terms in the sequence and then is going to um, add uh, each of those raised to some power to our running total. And then it'll go back around the loop again and assuming that that new term is not bigger than max value it'll append it to the list and redo the calculation. And once the while loop's condition is met, we'll drop out and go to the return. So that much is all the same as we've done before. And so we can show what happens here if we do um, call the Fibonacci sequence to up terms up to 100, two terms, and squaring them, then we can verify we do indeed calculate the 1, 1, 2, 5, 29. And then the next term will get much, much bigger um, than that, and will be well past 100. So um, by adding a second keyword parameter, we're basically independently controlling the number of terms and also the power. When we call the function, the second and third arguments we're passing to it are getting assigned to the two keyword arguments in turn. But if you want to just specify the power keyword value, then you can do it something like this. So what I've done here 
is I'm passing it 100, which is for the maximum turns, and then I'm not going to pass it a value for the number of terms to include, I'm just going to pass it a value for the power. And to tell Python that it's the power value I'm passing, I do power equals and then the value. I should just say here that as far as possible I'm going to stick to the convention that when I say parameters, I'm referring to what is in the def line. And when I say arguments, I'm referring to what happens when we call the function. So this Fibonacci n function, it has two keyword parameters. But when I'm calling it here, I'm having one positional argument and one keyword argument. So 100 is the positional argument, and then power equals 2 is the keyword argument, because I'm using it in the call line. And you'll see it does the same sum as we just had previously. So now you have to understand the rules about how does Python take the arguments you supply when you're calling the function and assign them to values of the parameters. So as the function executes, each parameter has the correct value. So the rule is that the positional parameters, so that's the things where you're not giving it a name, you're just giving it the value of the parameter, will be filled in first. If once you've done that, you have any other remaining positional arguments left over, then they are used to fill the keyword parameters in the order of which the keyword parameters were defined. And then after that, any keyword arguments are used to match against keyword parameters. So in the previous example, when I called my Fibonacci sequence with 100, 2 and 2, then the way it will happen there is, is OK, I've got one positional parameter and I've got three positional arguments. So the first positional argument matches against the positional parameter. I then have two positional arguments that are left over, and those are used to match the keyword parameters in order, so the n terms and the power. If you don't supply enough positional arguments, then you're going to get an error. If you supply both a positional argument and a keyword argument that are going to end up being matched against the same keyword parameter, you get an error. So here's some examples. So we've got four examples here. In the first example, uh, we're calling it exactly with the right um, number of positional uh, uh, arguments. So one positional argument, one positional parameter, it's 100. It then doesn't matter with the keyword arguments, which order you put them in. The keyword arguments will be matched against the keyword parameters. So although in the def line I define as n terms and then power, I can, because I'm giving them as keyword arguments, I'm saying this one's the power and this one's the n terms, it'll match it up correctly against the right one. In the second example, then um, I've given it two positional, positional arguments. The first of those, the 100, matches the positional parameter. There's then one positional argument left over, and so Python looks for the first keyword parameter and says, OK, I'll use that value for that keyword parameter. So the way we've defined our function, that's going to set n terms equal to 2. And then we have a keyword argument, and it matches that up to um, the keyword argument we have. So those are both going to work just fine. They're going to produce the same standard Fibonacci sequence. The third example is going to give us an error. The third example gives us an error because we haven't provided positional arguments. So we've just provided keyword argument and no positional arguments, and but there's a positional parameter. So if I have a positional parameter and I don't provide a positional argument, then it's not going to work. And then uh, the second, the last example also fails because although I provide a positional um, parameter, positional argument for the positional parameter, I've then got a, a two, which is going to say, ah, yes, that's a spare positional argument. I'm going to match that against the first keyword argument. Well, that's n terms. Then it looks at the keyword arguments and says, hang on a second, you've just given me another value for n terms. Um, and so it's going to say, oh, hang on, no, I can't do that. I can't go and have two arguments trying to match up against the same parameter.